Rick shared a ballooning hobby with his parents. While other families in the neighborhood were going on regular vacations, we were doing things like going around the Midwest, putting up a balloon at a county fair. We went up north to a lake, and instead of just swimming and playing in the lake like everyone else, we soaked some reed and wove a basket for the balloon. Now the fire doesn't get you, don't worry about it. When we went out to a county fair, we would put it up on a tether and take it up 100 feet and come back down. And so I was able to do that myself. As long as it's connected to the rope, there was no problem. In December 1969, Rick went to his first Vikings game. But he wasn't there solely to get swept up in the action as a fan. Rick was also part of the on-field entertainment. The halftime show was the promotion for the St. Paul Winter Carnival. So there was various events from the Winter Carnival that were on display during the halftime. We were there to promote the hot air balloon race that takes place. The plan was that my mom was going to get in the balloon and take it up to the end of the rope, wave to the crowd, and come back down. And my mom jumped into the basket and turned on the burner, and it was supposed to lift. For some reason, it wasn't lifting that day. So the idea came up, well, maybe we put someone lighter in the balloon and we can get it aloft. And so my mom hopped out, and that's when I hopped in the balloon. The 11-year-old initially got off the ground, but struggled to stay aloft. Rick touched down, then started to ascend once again. So the balloon started lifting off the ground a little faster, a little further than I had expected. And I didn't feel the tug at the end of the rope like I was expecting. And I, I looked down and I realized that the rope was not connected to the balloon and that I was actually free flying and watching the ground drop away underneath me. The lights are on in the stadium and I was really concerned about flying into that because it's 2,000 degree lights and that would have been the end of it. I realized that I was going to actually fly between two of the light standards and I was going to be okay. But the balloon kept rising. And, it, and I thought at some point in time I would start to come down, but it kept rising and rising and rising. Got high enough where I was in the clouds and I couldn't see the ground anymore. When I look back on it now, there was a lot of dangers involved in the, in the trip, and I didn't really appreciate it at the time when I was 11 years old. But there's high-voltage power lines, there's the, the airport that was nearby. I needed to get the balloon down, and it wasn't responding, and so I thought I had to take some action, and uh, I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but I opened up a hole at the top of the balloon and started letting some of the hot air out. And so I started to come down, and it looked like I was going to be hitting into a, a row of trees that was right in front of a river. Yeah, the, way. the problem is that as I started to descend, I was picking up speed. Okay. Yep, everyone off the box? Okay. And I could see that I was heading for some trouble. So I turned the burner back on to try to get some more lift to bring the balloon back up so I would get over the river and over the trees. It was only partially successful, but I was able to get enough lift to get over the trees so I wasn't hung up in the trees. But the balloon ended up landing right in the middle of the river. And as soon as the balloon hit the water, I was thrown forward out of the basket and into the water. And the balloon then, without my weight, took off immediately and flew away. I knew I had to swim to shore as quickly as I could, but I was fully clothed at the time. The water was like I was swimming in a big slushy. I finally was able to work my way to the shore. That's when I looked up and I saw a gentleman taking my picture. It had snowed, and so this gentleman was out taking pictures of the landscape. He saw the balloon come down, and he came over. He was a lifesaver for me. 
he was able to take me uh, back to the stadium. If he hadn't been there, I don't know uh, what I would have done, how, how I would have got back to the stadium. Rick recovered in the Vikings locker room. He pestered trainers for game updates until his parents returned from their rescue search. My mom came rushing in and started just crying uh, and threw her arms around me and was so happy to see me. And I was a little bit embarrassed because uh, all my clothes were off and I was under some uh, comforters and things like that. And I, I told her, just be really careful that you don't knock off my, my quilt here. <laughs> a lot of really nice, spirited people were sending me congratulation notes. No one knew where I lived, so these letters came in. The balloon boy. We got a call from the To Tell the Truth show, which was popular at the time. So I ended up being flown out to New York. Uh, this was the year that the Vikings made their first Super Bowl appearance. And so the flight ended up getting scheduled uh, without consultation by me during the actual Super Bowl. So we were flying uh, during the, the games. I didn't get to see the game. The pregame show that day featured a tethered hot air balloon, a Viking ship that maybe could have used a fearless young captain like Rick. Get it up in the air! I think after two incidents, the Vikings are done with uh, balloons at football games now. If that happened to us, would you still let us ride in the balloon? Or would you never let us in there ever again? I would only fly in a big balloon like this. <laughs> 